Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. And I want to thank you for joining us for the service of morning prayer on Friday the 24th of April. I hope that these daily offices are an opportunity for you to draw closer to Christ. I hope they're an opportunity for you to find peace and stillness in a troubling world. Let's take a few moments to calm ourselves, to prepare to pray, I'll light a candle to symbolize the prayers of the scattered church ascending into heaven, even when we can't gather physically for worship. And when we're ready, the service of morning prayer will begin on page six in the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia, Christ is risen. O come, let us worship. Alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that ye would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. O come, let us worship. Alleluia. The psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 16 and 17, beginning on page 345. Preserve me, O God, for in thee have I put my trust. I have said unto the Lord, Thou art my God, I have no good apart from thee. All my delight is upon the saints that are in the earth, and upon such as excel in virtue. But they that run after another God shall have great trouble. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, neither make mention of their names within my lips. The Lord himself is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou shalt maintain my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will thank the Lord for giving me counsel. My heart also instructeth me in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me, for he is on my right hand, therefore I shall not fall. 
Wherefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall dwell in safety. For why? Thou wilt not leave my soul to hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Thou shalt show me the path of life, in thy presence is the fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures for evermore. Hear the right, O Lord, consider my complaint, and hearken unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come from forth from thy presence, and let thine eyes look upon the thing that is right. Thou hast proved and visited mine heart in the night season. Thou hast tried me, and shalt find no wickedness in me. For I am utterly purposed, that my mouth shall not offend. As for the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the ways of the destroyer. My steps have held fast to thy paths, and my feet have not slipped. I have called upon thee, O God, for thou shalt hear me. Incline thine ear to me, and hearken unto my words. Show thy marvellous loving kindness, thou that art the saviour of them that put their trust in thee, from such as resist thy right hand. Keep me as the apple of an eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the ungodly that trouble me, even mine enemies that compass me round about to take away my soul. They close their heart to pity, and their mouth speaketh proud things. They lie waiting in, in our way on every side, watching to cast us down to the ground. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a lion's whelp lurking in secret places. Up, Lord, confront him and cast him down. Deliver my soul from the ungodly by thy sword. By thy hand from men, O Lord, from men of the world, who have their portion in this life, and whose bellies thou fillest with thy treasure. They have children at their desire, and leave the rest of their substance for their babes. But as for me, I shall behold thy presence in righteousness. And when I awake, I shall be satisfied with thy likeness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book Exodus, the 16th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. On the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers apiece. And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake, and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over lay by to be kept till the morning. So they laid it by till morning, as Moses bade them. And it did not become foul, and there were no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Remain every man of you in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now the house of Israel called its name manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. And Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded. Let an omer of it be kept throughout your generations, that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, 
Take a jar and put an omer of manna in it and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. And the people of Israel ate the manna forty years till they came to a habitable land. They ate the manna till they came to the border of the land of Canaan. An omer is the tenth part of an ephah. Here endeth the first lesson. The service of morning prayer continues with the Te Deum on page 7. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints, in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus said, I have said all this to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do this because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the counsellor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convince the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Here endeth the second lesson. The service of morning prayer continues with the Benedictus on page 9. 
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and ever more mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, Almighty Father, who hast given thine only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all the assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Almighty God, who art afflicted in the afflictions of thy people, regard with thy tender compassion those in anxiety and distress. Bear their sorrows and their cares, supply all their manifold needs, and help both them and us to put our whole trust and confidence in thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, went about doing good and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people, continue, we beseech thee, this his gracious work among us, especially in those working to contain the spread of COVID-19. Cheer, heal, and sanctify the sick. Grant to the physicians, surgeons, and nurses wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. And send down thy blessing upon all who labor to prevent suffering and to forward thy purposes of love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers at this time for all those who are in need of prayer, those who have particularly asked us to pray for them, and those whom the Spirit of God has put into our hearts to pray for. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us this, this morning for the service of morning prayer. I wonder if you noticed how the lectionary texts that we read from Scripture line up with what is happening in the world and in the week that we're in. This morning we're hearing the story in the first lesson of the sixth day the Israelites gathering an extra load of manna, two days worth instead of a single, because the day following, the seventh day, will be the Sabbath. This happens for them on a Friday. The Jewish Sabbath, of course, is on a Saturday. We hear this story of Sabbath. This is the first time that there's talk of Sabbath, that God is commanding his people to keep a rest. And maybe it is worth our while to consider how this notion of Sabbath and rest and unproductiveness and stopping and withdrawing, how that is a timely message for us to hear now in our current situation in the world right now. I hope that you'll be able to join us again tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon at 4.30 for the service of evening prayer, and I hope that you'll join us this weekend as we're streaming worship uh, on our Facebook page, sharing with the parishes of the Ascension, the Good Shepherd, and St. Mary's and St. Michael's, all of us working together at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Until then, be good, God bless, and take care of each other. Bye-bye. <laughs>